In this presentation, we are going to look at another risk modeling and survival analysis with our example. Now, this follows from the CS2B actuarial exam program, okay, which develops knowledge of and the ability to apply statistical methods for risk modeling, time series analysis, so on. So, classic processes, Markov chain, survival analysis, and so on. So this corresponds to question 2B that would be from this particular paper. I have to sort out the paper numbers there. This is probably paper A. So the Pareto distribution is one of the probability distributions in R for which there is no inbuilt code. Okay, there's no sort of R command readily available to generate random simulations using the Pareto distribution. The probability density function can be written as follows. So we have f of x there equals to alpha times lambda to the power of alpha divided by lambda plus x to the power of alpha plus 1, where x is greater than 0. Now, just as a quick remark, there are actually multiple versions of the Pareto distribution. And in this particular instance, what we're dealing with is the Pareto type 2 distribution, also known as the Lomax distribution. Now, the exercise is write down the R code for a function to simulate variables variates even, from the Pareto distribution, denoting it or Pareto, and pasting the, your coding into the answer. And using this, using this command, the, uh, this function that you created, generate 1,000 values for a Pareto distribution with parameters alpha equals 3 and lambda equals 1, assigning the simulation to a vector called power vector, and calculate the mean and the variance of the simulated values. Now, just as a remark, there are actually R packages that are readily available if you do want to sort of carry out some sort of analysis with the Pareto distribution, there is the Pareto type 1 distribution, which we can uh, use the Pareto R package to work with. And then there's the AGOP uh, package, which has commands related to the Pareto type 2 distribution, the Lomax distribution. In this case, we would be looking at the Pareto type 2 distribution. So this would have been relevant in this case. Now, the Pareto type 2 distribution, uh, the Lomax distribution, this is the probability density function. This is a different way of expressing what we have uh, given in the question. It's just a re uh, algebraically rearranged version of what I have. This is essentially a piece of text from a, te a textbook. Uh, this is the cumulative distribution function. Now, when we are generating random, uh, uh, random simulations from a generate an algorithm for that, we would use the cumulative distribution function to sort of build up the algorithm, okay? So it's, the, the process is called inverse transform sampling, okay? So this is a, the cumulative distribution function again. Now remember the cumulative distribution function is, takes some value between zero and one, or zero, zero percent and 100 percent. So that's the range of values. So that will correspond to the range of values of the uniform distribution, okay? So if you're not familiar with that, U, so we're gonna let, let U, which is the value that we would generate from the uniform distribution, and that, let that equal to the cumulative distribution function, okay? But what we're gonna do now is that we are gonna rearrange it such that we get this expression in terms of X. So that's actually how we go about inverse transform sampling. So essentially what I'm gonna do is rearrange it I'm going to state the expression as 1 minus u equals to this expression here, 1 plus x over alpha to the power of minus alpha, or, or x over lambda to the power of minus alpha. Now, this is an important thing. If u is uniformly distributed on that interval, it can be exchanged with 1 minus u and vice versa. Okay, so if we have an expression like u, we can, or 1 minus u, we can just exchange it for u that they're interchangeable because they have the same distribution essentially so essentially what i'm going to do here is place one minus u with u okay so let's rearrange that uh what we have to do now is uh, both powers both sides to the power of one minus one over alpha so let's just get rid of this here we want an expression in terms of x so we just need to get rid of this minus alpha so both sides to the power of 1 over minus 1 to over alpha, okay? And then we just multiply both sides by lambda. So essentially, this is our algorithm. So what we have to do is 
called this up. So U is R unif N, because we can have multiple observations of the uniform distribution. Uh, to the power of minus 1 over alpha, minus 1, okay, so that's everything in the brackets there, and multiply that by lambda, okay, so this is the function we get. So hopefully you're okay with how I got to here, this part here, and hopefully you're okay with seeing how I coded it up. For the sake of emphasis, uh, we just clarify that the uniform uh, variates are generated by R unif and there are n of them so we can make multiple uh, variates make multi simulate multiple values n values okay now so here we have set up our function and I think actually I made a little mistake there I think that's t I asked for 1000 but we have 10,000 here but we'll just go with it okay so it's 10,000 now it's not a big deal alpha equals 3 and lambda is equal to 1 so this is Pareto vector, power vector. The mean is a oh, power vector, which is get there as mean, 0 0.5067. And the variance there is 0 0.8503. Now, the mean actually is very close to the theoretical mean of the Pareto type 2 distribution, where alpha is equal to 2 and lambda is equal to 1. It actually is one uh, lambda divided by alpha minus 1. Uh, uh, lambda is 1, alpha minus 1 is 2, so 1 divided by 2 gives us 0 0.5, okay? Let's just actually compare and contrast with the Pareto 2 distribu uh, Pareto two from the a AGOP library. So essentially what we're going to do is just check our answers against something that was tested. So here we have what we created, power vector, okay, and there's the summary results. And this is the corresponding piece of code from the AGOP R package. Uh, I'm going to call it power check just to check our answers. And what we're going to do there is just see do they correspond to uh, the quantiles and the, do they correspond to each other. The first quartile, 0 0.1 and 0 0.1. Median, 0 0.25 and 0 0.261. That's okay, I suppose. 0 0.51 and 0 0.489. 0 0.59 and 0 0.589. It's a long tail distribu uh, distribution, so we wouldn't be paying too much attention to the maximum. We can graph this just to go a little bit further with it. And uh, What I'm going to do here is just set up a range of values. This is the values between 0 and 1 graduated by 5%, 0 0.05. So it's 0, 0 0.05, 0 0.1, and so on. That just creates that. And what I'm going to do is just calculate the quantiles from both power vector and power check, PVQ and PCQs, okay? Just the power vector quantiles and the power check quantiles. Okay, so I'm going to use that there, that command there, quantiles, and this just actually specifies the quantiles I want because that's what we're graphing essentially I plot that and I add it superimpose this graph above it or below it actually and this is what I get so this is not part of the answer but this is telling me that overall it's very close now we can disregard the maximum value because it's a long tail distribution so it's not uh, that important so for most of the the main range of values let's say between 0, 0 and 0 0.9 they correspond quite closely so that's pretty good